been working on this Turing Welchman bomb some more and I thought it might be a good idea to show how I've done the the wrinkle finish black paint that's used on the outside of the housing. A little bit hard to see on camera but this finish is a textured finish. Um, it's quite a sort of classic old-fashioned finish. It's used on machinery, things like this. Um, it's also used if we if we look over here on vintage car instrument panels. This is that finish there. Uh, my MGB uses the same sort of finish on its instrument panel as well. And it's the, the sort of finish that's used on the the original recreated uh, bomb at Bletchley Park. So that's the finish I've decided to use on mine. Uh, the, the casing has these metal covers on it and that's what I've been painting. I still need to do this side cover. Uh, I actually ran out of paint and had to wait to get some more which is why I thought it might be a good idea to show how I actually do this. So we start off with the the panel. Uh, this is just normal steel. That's It's actually Zintec steel so because it's been sanded and cleaned some of the zinc has come off which is why it's got that sort of patchy appearance. Uh, but it is clean. Um, for like any sort of painting job really you just want to make sure that the the metal is very clean. So we have that there. The paint itself comes in rattle cans. Uh, VHT Wrinkle Plus. So the example on the can here is actually some rocker covers. Now you can spray it direct from the can uh, but I find it, it very difficult to get a nice even coating which seems to be the most important thing for getting this, this wrinkle finish to work. So what I actually do is I take the paint out of the can and end up spraying it with a, a touch-up gun like this. Uh, so what I can do is show how I go about doing that. So here we have our can of paint. Now what I'm going to do is get the paint out of the can and decant it into this glass jar that I have. Uh, the way we're going to do that is to let all the gas out of the can. So I'll actually do this outside um, because one, the gas is flammable and two, when you start letting the gas out of the can it starts boiling out of the, the liquid paint and it can be quite a violent sort of reaction so that can cause paint to end up squirting everywhere out of the little tiny hole in the can. So um, the first thing we do is take the lid off and what I'll do is I'll let a lot of the gas out by what you do when you when you finish painting and you clear the nozzle. So when you when you finish painting normally you would turn the can upside down and hold the button down until just plain gas comes out. So what I'll do first is get as much of the gas out doing that as possible and then afterwards we will use our scriber here to poke the, the hole in the can to get the rest of the gas out and then we'll be able to tip the paint out. So I'll go outside and we'll do that. So the, the reason I'm wearing all this protective gear isn't for this one small little paint job, it's because I've been painting these wheels in the background that you can see. Still more. So probably enough of it's out of there now that we can poke a small hole high up in the can. still actually a lot of gas in there that's coming out so we can slowly start enlarging the hole but it's best not to start off with too large a hole to, to begin with
probably too hard to hear with all the traffic going past, but that's stopped outgassing now. So usually what I'll do is I'll enlarge the hole further and then I'll leave that sitting for an hour or so. Then we'll come back to it. So this is the can now that I've let all the gas out. Um, as you can see I also poked another hole in the top of the can in the other side, which is why that paint's now pouring out of it. So what we can do is transfer the paint into the jar. You can see the paint's quite thin. Uh, this wrinkle finish paint does seem thinner than most normal paint. So when we actually come to spray it, I don't thin it down at all. I just spray it as it is. One thing I like to do is pull off the nozzles and I keep all of these. I have a jar of solvent here and I put all my spray nozzles in that so I've always got clean nozzles I can use when I'm spraying um, because often you have the problem of them blocking up. So it should be most of the paint. Uh, you can hear the ball rattling around in there. I'll probably cut open the can later and pull that out and keep it. Um, I don't know why, I just tend to do that. And that gives you a good idea of how much paint is actually in one of these cans. So this jar this is 680 grams it says. So there's probably, I don't know, 250, 300 mil of, of actual paint in there. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll keep in this jar. It'll be interesting to find out. But um, what I'll do now is, it's still got a little bit of gas in it, but that's sort of bubbling out. Uh, what we'll do next is put some of the paint into our spray gun. Uh, I'm using a little touch-up gun here, because I'm only spraying a small amount of material. And um, I'll do that, and then I'll show you how I paint it and how we make it go wrinkle. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint my piece of steel. Um, I'm only actually painting one side, just the outside piece. So, of course, make sure you've got it the, the right way up. And make sure it's all very clean. So this has been sanded, um, sprayed with a phosphate solution, and wiped clean with wax and grease remover. Uh, it looks like it's a little dirty because there's still little bits of zinc all over it, but it is actually very clean. So. We have our paint um, inside the little touch-up gun. Uh, you'll notice also I've, I've covered up any vintage car bits or anything you don't want overspray on. So I have the steel sitting on top of this box just to raise it up. And the box is also useful just for testing that the, um, the spray pattern is correct. So I just test on the, the side of the box there. Now the idea with this is to get on a very even coating. So what I'll do is spray in one direction, get a nice coat on there, turn the box around, spray in an opposite direction, and just try to build up a nice thick even coat. So at some point the compressor may switch on, so you might not be able to hear me. Um, and I'll just also, normally I would use a, a proper, um, organic solvent type mask for this but for this I'm, I'm just going to use a, a paper mask so that if I need to talk you can still hear me um, and you can see I've sprayed a little bit before because that does actually pick up a lot of the it'll pick up a lot of the paint particles it won't protect you from the solvents but for a small job like this it, it shouldn't be too bad I'll just put this on
only small, put a small amount of paint into the um, into the pot here, so it's actually having trouble picking it up. But we'll just finish this last coat, and I can show you how to do the the actual wrinkle finish. What we have now is a fairly nice, even, quite thick coat on the steel. So if we, if we turn this around again. Now to actually get it to, to wrinkle, I use a heat gun. Now this, my last heat gun died. It started um, spitting out insulation material from the end of the gun, which when you're trying to dry paint is exactly what you don't want uh, because it sticks into the paint. Now notice here, I've, I've just now got a little bit of a, a hair or something in the paint, but um, hopefully that won't be too apparent when the, the wrinkle finish is done. Um, that's actually another good reason for wearing these sort of painter's outfits, is it's not to keep the paint off your clothes, it helps to keep any bits that you've got on you from falling into your paint job. So, back to the heat gun anyway. Um, this is just a, a normal sort of heat gun, this was really cheap. Um, after my last one started spitting bits out, I went and bought this. And basically this whole heat gun costs the same as one can of that wrinkle finish paint, which is about 30 New Zealand dollars. And uh, it's got a variable temperature and two speed fan. So basically all we do is turn it to the highest temperature and use it to heat up the, the panel. Now what will happen is eventually the solvents will come out of the paint. Um, this is another one where it, normally I would wear a mask and I may actually um, grab my, my vapor mask for this because you're actually causing the paint to dry and the, the vapors are coming off it. But what you should see happen is when the paint starts wrinkling, it'll go from this very flat, glossy, um, smooth finish to a, a more matte textured finish. And you can actually see that happening. So I'll just grab my, my proper mask and we'll give that a go. masks down you can see the paint in this part is now starting to wrinkle if I can grab the camera put the hot gun down as well now you'll see that it's starting to wrinkle so all we do is keep evenly heating the panel and basically chase that finish across the uh, across the face of the panel and you'll you'll see it happening
and that's the finish we're after there. So even though the paint is wrinkled, it's still not actually cured yet. So they do say to properly cure this paint, you need to, to bake it effectively um, for about an hour at around 95 degrees C. Um, if you're painting a rocker cover or something like that, just the heat of the engine would normally be enough to do that. If you're doing something like a like an instrument panel in, in the car there, um, it's a bit trickier to bake it. Um, what I usually do with those is, is wait for a really nice hot sunny day and just leave them sitting in the sun for as long as possible and then leaving the, the whole panel for about a week before I touch it. Uh, a smaller panel like this you can actually do in your domestic oven which is what I'll do. So normally I will just bake this in the oven for an hour at 95 degrees um, and then even then I, I tend to leave the panels for a few days before I try screwing anything into them or attaching them to anything. Um, but that's basically it and you can sort of see the finish there. It's, it's, it's a bit hard to get the um, the camera to focus on it really closely but uh, that's pretty much how that's done. I'll, uh, I'll bake this panel and then we'll come back to it um, and see how it's come out. So here just quickly is the the panel in my oven. Uh, as you can see it only just fits but uh, fits in there quite well. It's just a standard sort of domestic oven and I have it set to bake at 100 degrees and um, I have a little a little timer here. Well, I'll just leave that in there for an hour and then come back to it. Now we do shut the door of course. Now this will um, smell a little bit and I suspect how sensitive people are to the smell depends on how married they are. So since I'm lucky enough to live alone I can get away with doing things like this. Um, if you don't you might want to think about this step carefully before you actually try it. But this, to be honest the smell isn't that bad um, and it doesn't seem to to linger very long. This is a look at how the panels come out now that I've finished baking. Uh, I've pulled it out of the oven and you can see the sort of wrinkled textured finish on it here. Um, of course the the back of the panel is still bare steel. What I'll actually do is I'll leave this for a day or so um, and then I'll I'll spray the back with just standard sort of satin black paint. Now I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on, on the video but um, one of the things with this paint finish is the amount of wrinkle you get depends on how thick a coat you put down. So because I did this one with the with the touch-up gun and actually got a really nice thick coat, the, the wrinkle texture on this piece is actually a little bit different to, um, to some of the texturing on the rest of the bomb. So for example this piece here, uh, the texture isn't as pronounced and maybe the clearest way to show this is I have this little cover panel which um, fits on here it goes that way up. And this I just sprayed with the, the paint straight from the can. And I didn't get as good a coat, uh, which is why I used that, that touch-up gun. And if I sort of put that in place, you can actually see the difference in texture. It's, it's, not, it's not as wrinkled on this piece as it is here. Um, so one of the things is if, if you've got lots of panels like this to do, it's best to do them all at once so that you can get a very consistent finish to them. But for something like, like this, I actually quite like the fact that, that there's, there are differences in the pieces. Um, I think it just adds a little bit more interest to the, to the device. So I may respray this at some point. Um, you can see just, just when the light catches it that the paint coating on this wasn't very even which is why the finish isn't as good. So uh, of course I've, I've gone and 
cleaned up all my my spray gun and tidied everything away now so I, I can't paint this one now but uh, a, a little bit later on I may have another go at, at repainting this and um, you know just making it match the panel but uh, that's that's pretty much how that came out usually you can you, you'll see in certain lights if you haven't got the the, the coating thick enough and even enough you'll, you'll get unevenness in the pattern but uh, this, this one's actually pretty good and if you remember I, I actually had a hair or a piece of fluff or something that fell on the panel somewhere around here and you can sort of just see where it is but the fact that the finish isn't smooth of course hides small imperfections like that so this, this panel will now eventually fit on the side of the machine something like that and I'll uh, I'll make another film when it's all complete <laughs>